This is a big deal, you guys. She is the definition of Hollywood royalty, both here and across the pond. In fact, the Queen of England has given her a royal title. Please welcome to the show the iconic, the always fabulous Dame Joan Collins. Yes. Hi, Joan. Hi. Look Good at your here from sunny England. Wow. Ooh. Well, well, you... your, her home looks like a like a palace. Well, why wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Why <laughs> wouldn't it? Right? We expected nothing less. So, Joan, your new book, let's get right into this, walks us through your personal diary, starting with your final days on Dynasty. So you actually had a stunt yes. double on that show, and you only did one of the famous quote unquote cat fights start to finish. So we gotta ask, can you walk us through that infamous pond fight? Oh, the pond fight. <laughs> well, first of all, that was not a double that fell into the water. That was me. Um, and that is obviously <laughs> me. You can see it. The, um, in fact, I think it's me most of the time. Um, because when I fell into the water, I had a big hat on and the hat flew off, which is uh, slightly iconic. And um, we had to have that is the worst dress I ever wore in Dynasty. It is just hideous, I think. And um, we had to have like six of them because we did so many. Um, we did so many takes, so many takes in the water. I think we only did the the one fall into the water. But my gosh, that's so long, so long ago. You still remember that? Well, I mean, it's what everyone's talking about. They wanted. Why, how come you chose that to go all the way through? You did six takes. Did she give you a good one in the first take? There had to be. You got to finish the job. Like she did. <laughs> the director said, "Now, Linda, I want you to hit, and I'm, then I'm going to say freeze." But she didn't freeze. Luckily, it wasn't too bad. But it was—it uh, wasn't exactly Chris. Uh, it wasn't uh, the one that Chris Rock received. Oh, <laughs> Not like that. Ooh, we're gonna go there. Ooh, My face is okay. right on that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I get that in England too. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, let's keep the tea going because speaking of Linda Evans, in your book, you say that you weren't invited to her parties and seldom spoke on set. So why do you think your invitations got um? lost in the mail. <laughs> That's true, they did get lost in the mail. I think the mail is just terrible in Beverly Hills. So, uh, well, I'll tell you what I did. I was, uh, all of my family were in England. I got the most fabulous deal with British Airways, which was not money, it was free travel whenever I wanted to go. Ooh. So in my first three or four years in Dynasty, every time I had four days off, I would get on a plane, and of course it would always include the weekend. And so it would it, or, or sort of always um, be like the same time that Linda was having her parties, so I never mm. was able to go. Oh, yeah, you, well, can't, no. you can't go somewhere if you just said <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, jet setting. Well, jet setting to see my children. But you would do it too. I mean, if you guys got unlimited travel on an airline, mm -hmm. wouldn't you be up, up and away? Oh, yes. I wouldn't be whenever? here. I, this is the only place I would be is talking to you because I'd be in the skies 24 7. That, that, that's a great deal. Now, I have to ask you because we are all human beings and we all have feelings. So it seems like you and Linda, your relationship was at least strained. So, what is your relationship with Linda now? Well, Linda lives um, in the middle of America, and I live either in Hollywood or London. Mm. So those places are very far apart from that. But you know, I don't understand why you think that people who work together in a film or movie should be great pals, because very few people are. Now, I'm great pals with Stephanie Beecham, and I'm great, great pals with the three boys, Gordon Thompson, and Jack Coleman and John James. Um, we all got together last uh, last month, and um, I went to see their show. So uh, they are. And Sam, um, I, have, I have a quick follow-up question. I didn't question. write too much about I, what. I, 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 I've always wanted to ask a great actress like yourself this. Is there, is it better to have a little bit of tension with somebody that you're acting against? Is it almost better to not be good friends, especially if your characters are not like that on film? Yeah, because they were nemesis. Well, I don't think it makes any difference in, ten, in terms of personality. What I do know is that when I first um, worked with Linda, I had a scene in which I had to be said, and so I don't know what you're doing here, you little tramp. And I said it in a very low voice. And then 
when and that was the rehearsals we rehearsed a few times and then when it came to do it i pulled out all the stops and i gave it did full alexis and i said how dare you come into my home and take over you little twine <laughs> and at the end linda said oh my god that felt so real i said you can mean it i said no darling well, that thing. yeah <laughs> so, uh, that's worse. Listen, she, don't worry we've got more that was great. with dame joan collins <laughs> when we get back we're gonna get her thoughts on plastic surgery a lot more stay with us I we love, love you it. joan i had some thoughts on my book of course absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> We've been chatting with Dame Joan Collins about her days on Dynasty and, of course, her new book, My Unapologetic Diaries. She joins us live to continue the conversation. Please welcome back, Joan. Yes. Yeah. That was just me. Uh, <laughs> so, so I'm in London, and you guys are where? Where are you? We're in Denver. You're, Colorado. Well, you're in Denver. Kind of, of the middle I of America. Well. I used to be called the, the Denver Beast. Wow. I, uh, certain, yeah, when I was doing um, Dynasty, yeah, the I did. Denver but I talk Beast. about Dynasty quite a bit. Yes, Biest actually it was spelled B I E S. -E, dead dust, Denver Biest. Not a very nice title. <laughs> but, um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed my book because I, I do talk about Dynasty. I also talk about Star War, uh, Star Trek that I was in with. The, uh, you know, the wonderful Captain Kirk. And he uh, was uh, just uh, amazing. Bill, I liked him a lot. William Shatner. Yeah. And, uh, He's been on the show a few times. Yeah. Yeah. I played a very different role in that. I played a, um, a missionary worker, a saintly missionary worker, who tried to persuade the world that Hitler was a good guy. Wow. And unfortunately, they had to kill her. So Ooh. Dr. Spock put pushed her under a bus. And that's one of the stories that I tell in the book. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, I, I have to talk about your book because you talk about somebody who's a huge insp inspiration to myself, the late, great Sidney Poitier. You say the two of you had oh. some of the most interesting conversations just about life. Is there one discussion that stands out to you? Oh, wow. The one thing that does stand out to me so many times, you know, I knew Sidney from when he was doing a picture with Paul Newman, and I was in Paris with my boyfriend, and we used to go, we, we did a lot of drinking. Yeah. Um, we both liked a, a tipple. And um, was when we were at a friend's house uh, during the time of Obama, and we were waiting to see if Obama was going to be nominated to be president. And when he did, when he was, Sidney's face just lit up. Mm. And I said, are you happy? He said, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yes, he was. But he, I mean, he was very, very deep. And he loved my husband, Percy. He would take him to lunch and they would have long, long, long lunches. But basically I saw Sidney with Joanna who was a very good friend of mine, his lovely wife. And he was a man who uh, he overcame so much. You know, he was washing dishes in New York when mm -hmm. he was like 17, 18, mm -hmm. and coming from very, very poor circumstances. And he just became such an iconic and wonderful figure and admired so much, but so simple. I mean, he he never took himself seriously, although he was a very serious person. He was just one of the most wonderful people that I've ever met, and a very, very different from many Hollywood people, as you can understand. Very different. And Joan, you know, you're, this is your diary. Like, to those out there yes. who haven't read it, you get to have a glimpse into her iconic life. So why did you decide to release the book now? Well, it wasn't a question of now. First of all, I started writing it at the end of Dynasty, and I didn't write it. I spoke it into a little tape recorder that I'd been learning my lines in. And I, I, all of the things that appear in the first 20 years are all spoken. And then I decided to have it put down by a professional. And I mentioned it to my agent, and he said, well, that sounds good. Would you like to, you know, diaries are very popular, and you've had a very interesting life, I said, I'll say. So, can, so yes. I thought, why not? And um, it is a bit naughty in places, I know. I have a <laughs> few things to unapologetic. say. It's unapologetic. Yes. The title we is talking. perfect. Yes. To our viewers, we got, you got to pick up a copy of Joan's new book, My Unapologetic oh. Diaries. Dame Joan, thank you for chatting with us today. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>